Vera Mykolovna Kovaleva was one of the bravest nurses during World War II, she was sent to the front at only 14. As a teenager, she worked until exhaustion more than anyone else and tried to save every wounded soldier. Young adolescents and the beginning of hostilities. Vera lived on the outskirts of Leningrad near a small station. In addition to her, her mother and father were raising five other sisters. Their house was on the very outskirts, and the girl often liked to take walks in the woods. Everything was beautiful then, Kovaleva recalled after the war. She constantly admired the nature, gathered berries, and at the age of nine even caught a pike. But the war changed everything, the village was occupied, the Germans took everything and left the house dilapidated. Vera could no longer go to school after the war began. Together with her friend she got a job in a drying room at a military hospital. The girls had to heat the stove and prepare firewood themselves. For this purpose it was necessary to harness horses, and nobody knew how to do it at first. But Kovaleva along with other girls quickly learned this business, there was no way out at that time, sending to the front. After a while Vera and all the people who worked in the drying room were sent to the front line to help the hospital attendants. It took them a month to get to the front, but they had to travel in a cattle car. Vera Mykolovna recollects that right in the carriage they were told how to render first aid. They were shown how to apply a tourniquet and give injections. Only when they arrived in Kaunas at the front line did the girls realize what war was like. They were lodged in a barracks in Sheksna, the city was not badly damaged, but nearby Kaunas was in ruins. At first Kovaleva was afraid to go out at all, a shell could come at any moment. But she had to pull herself together and start rescuing the wounded. The captain without a leg. Vera remembered this incident for the rest of her life. She saw the captain on the battlefield, he was bleeding, his leg was torn off. The 14-year-old girl had to drag him to the infirmary. She took off her overcoat and dragged the wounded man along the ground. The captain was shouting at her with foul language, the nurse recollected. He was in great pain, but when the skinny Kovaleva managed to drag the man to the doctors, he apologized profusely. After the war, he found his savior and gave her a watch and beautiful German handkerchiefs. After Kaunas, Kovaleva was sent to East Prussia. Her unit followed the first units, and nurses had to find the wounded and take them to the hospital. The girl was hardly ever on the front line, the commanders tried not to send very young nurses into the thick of it. 400 wounded a day. At first the supplies were very tight. Boots were issued in different sizes, overcoats did not fit either. Kovaleva met a Lithuanian guy who was a tailor and helped the nurses alter their clothes. There were also problems with food, Vera said after the war. At first we were given only frozen cabbage and potatoes, sometimes there was also black bread. We could not even dream of meat. Then the girls were transferred to the hospital where there was a shortage of nurses. There, in the canteen they had already begun to be well fed. There were a lot of wounded, we had to serve up to 400 people at once during the day. It happened that nurses had to sleep for two to three hours. But Kovaleva and other nurses did not get discouraged they even held dances when the situation permitted and the hospital was not shelled. The victory Kovaleva met in East Prussia, all were very pleased and at the same time saddened, many did not return from the war. Her sisters had lost their husbands at the front, and very many soldiers died simply in the girls' arms, it was impossible to save them. Transfer to Khabarovsk, but in May the war did not end for Kovaleva, she was sent to the east. In a field hospital the girl had to treat the wounded Japanese. The conditions were horrible, she had to live in dugouts, where the Japanese were also treated. Vera Mykolovna has fond memories of them. The wounded were very friendly, they loved the cleanliness, helped the nurses with ironing and washing their coats. And one of them even fell in love with a nurse. Nomura invited Vera to Tokyo, gave her gifts, but she refused. In the medical unit Kovaleva met her future husband. He was very jealous of her to the Japanese, and even burned the girl's front album, as there was also a photo with him. Because of this, the couple almost broke up. Peaceful life after the war, Vera got married and moved to Primorai. The country's leadership awarded the nurse a lot of medals, noting her fearlessness and desire to give herself completely to the country in difficult times. Kovaleva often recalled the war years, she was very sorry that many young men could not be saved. Most of all the nurse remembered the soldier Nikolai Sergienko. He was wounded almost in the heart, Kovaleva made a bandage and an injection. Everything should have ended well, but suddenly he died. Vera Mykolovna had a son and a daughter. The boy from his childhood wanted to become a military man, but unfortunately, he died in the army. The nurse's husband passed away later, so did her sister, and she moved to her daughter in Sakhalin. 